We're back and this time we settle the age-old debate of sword and shield versus spear. What's better in a duel? Well, of course this is one data point only, but you get two practitioners that are at least well versed with both weapons. So no beginner spear fighters at all. I marked all the hits for you to see better what's going on. And the first thing to note is that, of course this is again pretty light and playful sparring, but that's also really necessary because with the staff you can hit really really hard, especially to the head. So the first and most obvious thing is obviously reach. The spear has a lot more than sword and shield. So you can't afford to hesitate as a sword and shield fighter. If you get any parry or any light positional advantage you have to go in. You have to use that advantage, get past the point of the spear and also cover uh, yourself against st uh, strikes with the staff and get in there and use that advantage. So what you see me doing here is most of the time that I try to stay just at the edge of, of reach and wait for Stefan to make a committed attack to myself which I can then parry and repose to then go in. But this also has quite a danger. Like you see here, I'm not really committing myself and that exposes me to another counter thrust which goes high low high low to all the openings I give him. So for the next bout I try to make myself a smaller target, go more into a deep stance and then try to really commit. So once I have parried the spear once, I go in there, try to stay in the bind and then strike around the shaft to Stefan's body. So this really feels like interval sprint training, where you wait for the perfect opportunity, but then you have to go all in. And even then, it's not really that easy, because the opponent has a couple of several actions that they can perform before you get close enough. So if they can retract the point, they can get in another thrust. And even if they don't retract the point, the staff is already a dangerous weapon in itself. You also see that we don't stop on every first hit just because we're trying to see what happens when we play this out. And most of the time you don't really notice if it was a good hit or if you're just sliding around the staff, but sometimes it's also really clear. And if you're performing in front of the God of War, you might as well give it your best shot and not get hit that easily. So you see we both are still playing around quite a bit, trying to show off, which is a quite common thing in the Bolognese sources. But then again, if you just uh, show off and don't go for these real attacks or don't uh, perform actual feints and then retract the spear point, you can get hit quite easily. So once you get past the point, it gets way more easier for the sword and shield fighter. The queuing technique of the spear, thrusting it forward and sliding it through the front hand and then retracting it is quite useful. And as you see a lot of hits here, but I wouldn't count everything, I'll leave this up to you. I would say though that this last strike of Stefan like here, this could be a really heavy blow with the staff. So you shouldn't underestimate this and this really rocks your head if you are not careful. So pay attention. Like always, after halftime we switch the weapon combinations and now it's my time to shine with the spear and you see that I do really a lot of small disengaging motions guy, uh, trying to pull the defenses up and then thrusting down below disengaging underneath the shield which gets me a nice and solid hit. A very useful habit to pick up when spear fighting is to always finish on a high hit. So even if you strike them already low, go up high again, just to make sure that they are stopping their motion. One thing I really try to teach when fighting with any weapon really is that your attacks have to become from a position of good structure. So even if you overextend and get to the tag, that's not really a hit that would be martially valid. So try to stay in a good structure, that way you can also defend against the other strikes way better and this actually leaves you less open for any follow-up attacks. And another thing you saw in the bout before this with the suboptimal structure was that I tried to use 
the partisan actually to not only thrust but also to strike which is a really really useful thing to do if you align the blade correctly and used like this the partisan or the spear almost feels like a longsword so that's really fun to do two things are happening right now first I make my actions a lot tighter and I try to use the openings that present to myself as efficient and as directly as possible so this gets quite frustrating for Stefan and that is something that you can see in his body language so this really is an uphill battle not only are you fighting against a disadvantage but you have to expend a lot of energy to stand at least a chance getting in there so it gets really frustrating if you expend all that energy and then it's for nothing this actually makes this a really good training exercise because you now you can practice to overcome these psychological difficulties and then get hit with the back edge strike from the spear in the head well that's that but sometimes training is like this you really have to embrace failure and work through it to learn a thing or two while it can get hard this is also something that you really have to learn if you want to become a good martial artist and I think Stefan does a good job here pulling himself together and going in for another bout which is the last one of this exchange where we play around for just a bit before we get thrust <laughs> <laughs> okay, so spear versus sword and shield. That's quite an interesting fight. I feel if you don't parry the spear outwards and directly rush in, you have no chance. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's not much to say. So uh, as long as you have the point in front of you, you have no no chance because it moves so much faster and the opponent is so far away so you cannot simply strike them yeah basically in the time you need to close the distance the one wielding the spear has three or four actions that he can perform easily while also maybe retreating to even get more actions for free basically and that makes it really really hard and leverage Leverage with the spear shouldn't be underestimated. We had to go really, really soft, it had, it had to be said, because this staff can hit really, really hard. Yeah, it's basically like an original. The only difference is the tip. So the staff hits as like a real one. <laughs> yeah, and you can thrust. You can cut actually with the, with the spearhead. That's no problem. Partisan, uh, that was used. That's really a thing. You can strike with the back edge. It's a nasty weapon. It's designed for battlefield purposes. Yes, and I mean, maybe, maybe it would have been different if we had like less space to move. So maybe then the shield man could have this, uh, more uh, of an advantage. But even though like a small corridor would n never be possible to go through against the spear, I guess. Yeah, maybe things would change with a sharp sword maybe so you would have a more like stable bind i guess because the sword wouldn't cut through the uh, the shaft in one go not at all but it would cut into the shaft and there you have a bit more sensation of feeling and where the where the friction. and the friction where the other weapon goes so this could help again uh, wearing mask um, dampens our sensibility to the sense of sight so it's with a fading light this might have had an impact as well but i think it's pretty clear that someone who is skilled with a spear has an advantage over someone who is skilled with sword and shield yes okay i agree yeah maybe it changes with a bigger shield we'll find out maybe in the future video we hope you enjoyed this one folks take care and see you soon ciao